You are listening to the Life Coach School podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 110. Welcome to the Life Coach School podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. How are you, my friends? Oh my goodness. I'm so good. Everything's great. Isn't that fun to hear? Sometimes things aren't great. Today, things are great. Gorgeous here in California today. Ridiculous. I'm wearing a short skirt, no nylons, no tights. Gorgeous. Instead of getting an afternoon coffee, I got an afternoon iced tea. That's what's up in California today. Really excited for everyone coming in from all over the world to my training this Friday. We're going to have some beautiful weather. The other thing I want to tell you is advanced skills training. If you want to come spend two days with me learning all this stuff at the next level, you are welcome to do so. Head on over to the Life Coach School site, look up advanced training and come hang out with me for two days and see what it's like to learn through a fire hose. (laughs) It's all awesome, good stuff. So I look forward to meeting you in person. All right. So today we're going to talk about Joe Dispenza. He is my brother from another mother. I don't know how it has taken me so long to find him, but I'm going to be honest with you and tell you how I found him. I found him because I was laying in bed one night and I like to watch TV before I go to bed. And when I I say that, I mean that very loosely. I turn on the plasma (laughs) that's on the wall and I fall asleep within five minutes, but I, I have good intentions. I really enjoy watching recently The Americans. I've watched American Idol because it's the last season, and I've watched The Americans. I've really enjoyed that. I'm not sure about Scandal anymore, y'all. It's kind of lost me. But I'm really loving The Americans. I think it's fun and fantastic. And, um, loving loving that. But anyway, I, was, um, I didn't have anything recorded, nothing to watch. Ooh, and the O.J. Simpson, The People versus O.J. Simpson. Oh, my gosh, I'm totally loving that. But on my Amazon, it shows me like subscriptions. It's all on my TV. And one of them was Gaim. And I could look on there and there was this guy, Joe Dispenza, who was talking about Mind Over Matter, which is, you know, right up my alley. And I watched his presentation and loved, loved, loved him. I'm like, this guy is speaking my language. Loved him. Like, where have you been? And I proceeded to buy three of his books. I bought Evolve Your Brain. I'm like, seriously? How is that title any more perfect? You are the placebo and breaking the habit of being yourself. They are all thick and fat and fabulous books. You know when you get a book and you're like, oh my God, I love this book so much, I don't want it to end. That's how I feel about nonfiction. And that's totally how I feel about this book. So if you want to pick one, I would start with Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I think it's the most applicable. There's so much in here that is so resonates and aligns with what I teach. There's a few things that are contradictory, but only if you get caught up in the words he uses in the details. Otherwise, it's very complimentary. And if you love my work, you will love his work. It's so good. I went and watched him speak publicly too. And I I thought he was fantastic. So breaking the habit of being yourself, Joe Dispenza. And um, we will have a link to all three of his books in the show notes. So you can check them out. Now, I am going to go over some of his quotes and some of his teachings so we can talk about them in a little bit more detail. And I can share a little bit of his wisdom with you. But I don't think anything compares. Like I'm just, I'm opening up this book and I wrote in the column here, what? Exclamation point, question mark right next to this, the body becomes addicted to guilt or any emotion in the same way that it gets addicted to drugs. Trying to change your emotional pattern is like going through drug withdrawal. Holy what? I love it. It's like at first you only need a little bit of the emotion and drug in order to feel it. Then your body becomes desensitized and your cells require more and more of it just to feel the same again. Once your cells are no longer getting the usual signals from the brain about feeling guilty, they begin to express concern. Okay. So 
before the body and the mind were working together to produce this state of guilt, now you're no longer thinking and feeling, feeling and thinking in the same way. So your intention is to produce more positive thoughts, but the body is still all revved up to produce feelings of guilt based on guilty thoughts. Amazing, right? So his whole book is filled. I said, what? Wow. I turned the page. What? Wow. Enter the subconscious to change it. So I think that so much of what he teaches, I, I just loved it. Everything in here, I have notes and circles and stars. And, you know, I just really, really, really think his work is worth exploring and diving into. I know that some of you will really study his work. I introduced his work in my Stop Overeating Masterclass last time, and my uh, students loved it, and we talked a lot about it. He also has quite a few YouTube videos that are hours long that you can um, listen to that I really, really enjoyed. I think he's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about some of his teachings and what he believes and how he presents them, similar to what I teach, but just in a different way. Okay. First one, we should never wait for science to give us permission to do the uncommon. If we do, then we're turning science into another religion. I love this. He talks a lot about science. He talks a lot about, especially in You Are the Placebo, a lot about disease and medicine and medical conditions and how the mind has so much power over the manifestation of disease. I'm taking this time to create my day and I'm infecting the quantum field. Now, if it is a fact that the observer watching me the whole time that I'm doing this and there is a spiritual aspect to myself, then show me a sign today that you paid attention to any one of these things that I created and bring them in a way I won't expect. So I'm as surprised at my ability to be able to experience these things and make it so that I have no doubt that it's coming from you. And so I live my life in a sense all day long thinking about being a genius or thinking about the glory and power of God or thinking about being unconditional love. Love that. This is great. A memory without the emotional charge is called wisdom. Brilliant. Meditating is also a means for you to move beyond your analytical mind so that you can access your subconscious mind. That's crucial since the subconscious mind is where all your bad habits and behaviors that you want to change reside. We've talked a lot about this on the podcast, about how that unconscious mind, that automaticity of our habits are all under our conscious awareness. All those neural pathways are under our conscious awareness. And so we need to enter into that unconscious awareness in order to change it. Psychologists tell us that by the time we're in our mid-30s, our identity or personality will be completely formed. This means that for those of us over 35, we have memorized a select set of behaviors, attitudes, beliefs, emotional reactions, habits, skills, associative memories, conditioned responses, and perceptions that are now subconsciously programmed within us. Those programs are running us because the body has become the mind. This means that we will think the same thoughts, feel the same feelings, react in identical ways, behave in the same manner, believe the same dogmas, and perceive reality the same ways. About 95% of who we are by midlife is a series of subconscious programs that have been automatic, driving a car, brushing our teeth, overeating when we're stressed, worrying about our future, judging our friends, complaining about our lives, blaming our parents, not believing in ourselves and insisting on being chronically unhappy, just to name a few. So good. Love the way he talks about how we just repeat our lives based on the, that neural programming. And you can teach your body emotionally what it would feel like to believe in this way, to be empowered, to be moved by your own greatness, to be invincible, to have courage, to be in love with life, to feel unlimited, to live as if your prayers are already answered. This is a great question. Can you accept the notion that once you change your internal state, you don't need the external world to provide you with a reason to feel joy, gratitude, appreciation, or any other elevated emotion. It's so powerful. Can you accept that once you change your internal state, you don't need the external world to provide you with that? 
Your thoughts are incredibly powerful. Choose yours wisely. Love it. First, every day I would put all of my conscious attention on this intelligence within me and give it a plan, a template, a vision with very specific orders. And then I would surrender my healing to this greater mind that has unlimited power, allowing it to do the healing for me. And second, I wouldn't let any thought slip by my awareness that I didn't want to experience. The latest research supports the notion that we have a natural ability to change the brain and body by thought alone, so that it looks biologically like some future event has already happened, because you can make thought more real than anything else. You can change who you are from brain cell to gene, given the right understanding. Because consciousness is awareness, Awareness is paying attention, and paying attention is being present and noticing. This consciousness would be aware of when I was present and when I wasn't. I would have to be totally present when I interacted with this mind. My presence would have to match its presence. My will would have to match its will, and my mind would have to match its mind. All someone has to do in order to be hypnotized or to hypnotize himself or herself is to move down from high or mid-range beta waves into more relaxed alpha or theta state. Thus, meditation and self-hypnosis are similar. To be happy with yourself in the present moment while maintaining a dream of your future is a grand recipe for manifestation. When you feel so whole that you no longer care whether it will happen, that's when amazing things materialize before your eyes. I've learned that being whole is the perfect state of creation. I've seen this time and time again in witnessing true healings in people all over the world. They feel so complete that they no longer want no longer feel lack, and no longer try to do it themselves. They let go, and to their amazement, something greater than they are responds, and they laugh at the simplicity of the process. Think of it this way. The input remains the same, so the output has to remain the same. How then can you ever create anything new? If you want a new outcome, you will have to break the habit of being yourself and reinvent a new self. What beliefs and perceptions about you and your life have you been unconsciously agreeing to that you'd have to change in order to create this new state of being? A new state of being creates a new personality. A new personality produces a new personal reality. How will you know whether this meditative practice has activated your three brains to produce the intended effect? Simple. You will feel different as a result of investing in the process. That's why I called my last book, The Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, because that is the greatest habit we have to break, thinking, feeling, and behaving in the same way that reinforces the unconscious programs that reflect our personalities and personal realities. We can't create a new future while we're living in our past. It's simply impossible. To be empowered, to be free, to be unlimited, to be creative, to be genius, to be divine, that's who you are. Once you feel this way, memorize this feeling, remember this feeling. This is who you really are. Most change starts with the simple process of something outside of us altering something inside of us. If you begin the inward journey and start to change your inner world of thoughts and feelings, it should create an improved state of well-being. If you keep repeating the process in meditation, then in time, changes should begin to alter your outer presentation and you become your own placebo. When you meditate and connect to something greater, you can create and then memorize such coherence between your thoughts and feelings that nothing in your reality, no thing, no person, no condition at any place or time could move you from that level of energy. And now surrender your creation to a greater mind for what you think and experience in this realm of possibility 
if it is truly felt, it will manifest in some future time from waves of possibilities to particles and reality, from the immaterial to the material, from thought to energy into matter. Beliefs and perceptions are subconscious states of being. They start with thoughts and feelings that you think over and over until they ultimately become habituated or automatic, at which point they form an attitude. You must feel a new energy to become something greater than your body, your environment, and time, so that you have dominion over your body, your environment, and time. Become a thought that affects matters. It makes sense that we should concentrate not merely on avoiding negative emotions like fear and anger, but also consciously cultivating heartfelt positive emotions such as gratitude, joy, excitement, enthusiasm, fascination, awe, inspiration, wonder, trust, appreciation, kindness, compassion, and empowerment to give us every advantage in maximizing our health. I love this one, like this idea that we can create emotion, we can practice emotion, we can feel emotion on purpose. We can dedicate ourselves to literally practicing the skill of feeling an emotion and that can, that vibration in our body can literally change our body, can literally change matter, can literally change the actions that we take is such a huge part of my work right now. I feel so strongly about noticing what emotions are creating results we want and what emotions are creating results we don't want and how we can decide on purpose to feel something or decide on purpose to unwire the habit of feeling something that we may have become really accustomed to feeling on a regular basis. A great example of this that I've talked about in the podcast is the uh, emotion of desire and how even though desire feels good, in many cases, it gives us a result that we don't want. And so being able to change the way we feel desire towards things can ultimately change our life. So if you can change your desire to drink alcohol or change your desire to overeat, then you can ultimately change the result that you're creating by the thoughts that you're thinking that are generating those emotions. Just as thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel create a state of being. A state of being is when your mind and body are working together. So your present state of being is your genuine mind-body connection. Stress is one of the biggest causes of epigenetic change because it knocks your body out of balance. It comes in three forms, physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. Each type can set off more than 1,400 chemical reactions and produce more than 30 hormones and neurotransmitters. When that chemical cascade of stress hormones is triggered, your mind influences your body through the autonomic nervous system and your experience. So it's so important to know that we are creating the experience in our body. We are creating our body's environment and we have so much more power over that than we can even imagine having right? So I think that it's so important to give ourselves our power back, give ourselves the truth of how powerful we are. The name of his book, Evolve Your Brain, I think is so powerful because if you understand how your brain evolved the way it has and why it works the way it does work, it's very focused on looking for danger and surviving in an environment that we currently are in where that's not as necessary, it makes sense why we think the way we do. And we can understand that from a place of compassion, but we can also evolve it to the place and program it. So it's more able to serve us in the environment that we are now living. I really feel like this has been my next evolution of myself is understanding that my brain and the experiences that created it, the way that it has been evolved is really outdated. 
and that it's my job to evolve it to the next level where it understands that I'm not in any physical danger, that the stress is not necessary, the anxiety is not necessary. And in fact, I can create um, a way of thinking that helps me not only survive in this environment, but absolutely thrive. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my introduction here to Joe Dispenza. Amazing. Love him. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One. Highly, highly, highly recommend you pick that book up. Check out his YouTube and listen to him. He's fantastic. He has some great meditations too that are challenging, but I highly encourage you to uh, check out and experience. Have an amazing, wonderful week, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Life Coach School podcast. It is my honor to show up here every week and connect with people that are like-minded, wanting to take their life to a deeper level with more awareness and more consciousness. If you are interested in taking this work to the next level, I highly encourage you to go to the lifecoachschool.com forward slash how to feel better online. It is there that I have a class that will take all of this to a deeper application where you'll be able to really feel and experience how all of these concepts can start showing up in your life. It's one thing to learn it intellectually. It's another thing to truly apply it to your life. I will see you there. Thanks again for listening.